mid-1980s, I had just finished a project with Dr. Beckman, the chemical synthesis laboratory. And Dr. Beckman liked what we did there and approached me for ideas about a bigger project. And so we came up with the idea of a, of a Beckman Institute to support fundamental research in chemistry and biology. And the Institute would be dedicated to developing instrumentation and methods to support basic research. And Dr. Beckman liked that idea. Two of the first resource centers that were established early on, about the time we opened in 1989-1990, with a laser center, which I started with Jay Winkler, and the material center, which Nate Lewis started, now with Bruce Brunswick. And these two resource centers started working in solar-related areas. The laser center started working on problems in photochemistry related to solar energy conversion. The material center started working on materials related to solar energy conversion and slowly but surely the Beckman Institute started developing programs in solar energy conversion. We better start thinking about paying back. We better start thinking about not just taking from nature, which we've been doing since the beginning of civilization, taking all the oil, gas and coal, we should start thinking about doing it ourselves making artificial photosynthetic devices that would actually make solar fuel directly. Sunlight and water to clean fuel. We had to develop a solar water splitter, but one that would be made from earth abundant, cheap materials, stuff like iron rust and fool's gold. We now have catalysts made of cobalt that work. We have catalysts made of iron. Iron is cheap as dirt. We've got catalysts made of nickel and molybdenum that are working. We've made enormous progress on the problem of making cheap catalysts to make hydrogen fuel. The real challenge now is making sure we get the electrons from water. We can't afford to get the electrons from oil, gas, and coal. That's a losing proposition. We've got to get them from water. That's the resource we will have forever, just like we'll have the sun forever. To the California Institute of Technology, they're developing a way to turn sunlight and water into fuel for our cars. There's got to be a fabulous catalyst out there that is yet to be discovered. It's going to be a new composition of matter. It's probably going to have three or four metals in it. So we have to search for it. Now, I could either use robots or I could use kids. I decide to use students because they're a lot more fun to work with than robots. So guess what I did? I started a solar army. I'm Harry Gray. I'm the Arnold Beckman Professor of Chemistry at Caltech, and I'm the Commanding General of the Solar Army. We started by getting brigades of undergraduate students around the country working on solar materials discovery. We have kits. We have ways to search. We have kids in classrooms and after-school activities searching. And then we decided that, you know, high school kids can do this. High school kids can do this as an after-school activity, so we went into high schools. We got hundreds now of high school kids doing real research, and these kids are fantastic. They're coming in here excited about science. They're doing chemistry and physics and engineering. I'm very proud of that. This is a revolution that's going on that started with initial funding from the Beckman Foundation. It started all here at the Beckman Institute. You should be proud to be associated with Caltech in any way, as I am indeed.